Hello and welcome back to my Arduino and electronics channel. My name is John and this is the fourth video in a series of tutorials about Arduino and basic electronics. Today we will see how to work with inputs, adding a push button and using it to command our LED. We will add this to the circuit we built last time, if you do not have this ready, please go back to part 3 before watching this video. Add a push button to your breadboard and connect both the ground and 5 volts pins to the breadboard power rails. Now connect one side of the button to pin 5, this will be our input pin. Now you can see that there are two things we can do, we can connect the other side of the button to the ground, so when we push it we will connect the ground to our input, or we can connect the 5 volts pin instead, in this way when the button is pressed the input pin will be connected to 5 volts. Both ways works equally well. If we use the ground, the push button will set the input pin to low, and if we use the 5 volts the button will set the input to high. This rise a question, in which state is the input when the button is not pressed, or in other words when there is nothing connected to it. The answer is that we do not know, we call this condition a floating input and the wire attached to it will act as a tiny antenna, picking up all manners of disturbances and giving unpredictable results. To have a reliable input we must find a way to force the pin to be in a well-defined state when the button is not pressed. To do this we use again a resistor to let a tiny bit of current flow through the pin and constrain it in a known condition. We can use 10 a kilo ohm resistor connected to ground to force the pin to be low, or we can attach it to the 5 volts pin to force it to be high. In the first case we call this a pull down resistor, and in the second case a pull up resistor, because it literally pulls the state of the pin one way or the other. We will start with a pull down resistor. In this configuration the state of the pin is low, and when we press the button it will change to high. We need to go to the Arduino IDE, and ask Arduino to read the state of the input pin and switch on the LED if it is high. First of all we will give a name to the input pin, just as we did for the LED pin. We want to use pin 5, so we write define, button, 5. Now every time the sketch will encounter the word button it will treat as the number 5. Now, as we did for the output, we go to the setup and tell Arduino that we want to use this pin as an input. At this point we can add some comments if we want, to help us understand what's going on. Maybe some little information on what is happening on those lines, like this. Delete the content of loop and let's write something new. Now, inside the loop function, we are going to read the state of the pin. We will first read the pin and insert the value into a variable. A variable is like a placeholder for a value that we know is going to change when the program is running. To initialize a variable we need to define what type of data it will contain and give it a name, so we write int button state. int is the data type of the variable, don't worry about that now, we will cover all data types in another video. Note that variable names cannot contain spaces, so it is of common use to capitalize the first letter of the second word, if we need to use more than one. Now that the variable has a name we are going to assign a value to it. This is done with the sign equals, this means that we make the value of the variable equals to whatever value follows the sign. Now this is where the magic happens, after the equals sign we write digital read, button. In the same way as for the digital write instruction, the parameter is enclosed in braces, and we end the statement with a semicolon. Add a comment here too. Now the variable contains the state of the pin, and we can use this to make a decision. Let's write if button state equals equals high. This takes the value of the variable and compares it to the condition. Note that a single equals sign means assign a value, while the double equals sign means compare a value. 
so the value of the variable button state is compared to the condition high, and if they are the same then whatever is enclosed between the curly braces after the if instruction is executed. Now, what we want is to switch on the LED, so we do exactly as we did in the previous sketch. Digital right, LED, high. We also need to tell Arduino that we want to switch the LED off if the button is not pressed, so we add this code. Else, digital right, LED, low. When the sketch will be executed, if the condition is true we switch on the LED, else we switch it off. Verify that your circuit is like this and upload the sketch. If all went well, now when you press the button the LED will turn on, and it will switch off when you release it. Now we can try to use a pull-up configuration, modify your circuit like this, connecting the button to the ground and the resistor to 5 volts. Now the input pin is kept high, and goes to low when we press the button. Try to see what happens, now the LED is always on, and it only switches off when you press the button, because now the button forces the input to be low. If we want it to work like before, we simply need to reverse the logic of the program. Now if the condition is true we switch the LED off, else we switch it on. Upload the sketch again and now it should work like before, with the button switching on the LED. Now, it is not very convenient to have to add a resistor to every input, so Arduino has a set of built-in pull-up resistor that we can use. To use them, all we need to do is to set the pin mode to input, pull-up, and we do not need the external resistor anymore. Modify the sketch like this, and you can eliminate the resistor. Take the resistor off. You can eliminate all this jumper wires too. And connect the button directly to pin 5. Upload the sketch and verify that all is working as expected. Using the internal pull-up resistors is very convenient as we do not need to add an external one. Next time we will see how the analogic inputs works, and how to send information to our computer monitor. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to hear your comments and suggestions. If you liked it, you can leave me a like and subscribe to my channel, so you will not miss the next videos. See you soon on Arduino and Electronics channel.